I first uh, created an online course, the biggest question somebody asked me was, you are a very, very visual audio teacher. You have a very particular in-person teaching style. How do you engage the students and get them interested in the course? And uh, so one of the biggest challenges was how to involve each student. And I do that with the forums. Uh, one of the biggest things I do is that I make each forum activity um, into detective work. And each week at the beginning of the week, on Monday, the students are given a mystery question. And so they are actually playing history detective. They're sort of like Sherlock Holmes. Uh, they're almost like an Indiana Jones figure. And they have to really work together uh, and use their personal experiences as well as um, clues to figure out the different uh, topics that we're talking about and get the correct answer for each question I pose. Uh, one of apparently my favorite weeks and the students' favorite weeks is India. Um, in this case, it is a very political question as well. I'm asking about uh, how caste is involved in race. And as you see here, um, students start to realize Filipinos, Japanese and Indians are totally tied to India. And the discussion becomes actually even more personal uh, than when I do this in class. Um, and I respond to each one of them, 37 students, and that does take quite a bit of time. At the end of the week, I give them the answer, but hilariously, some of them will tell me, don't give me the answer. I just want to wait until the end of the week. And the anticipation really helps to get them engaged. Plus, they share personal stories, uh, and I share my stories, and then it becomes a completely unique activity. As for expectations and communication uh, between the teacher and the student, you can see here that I have an activities chart. And so each week the students clearly know what to do. But within that, I'm also trying to channel them to do more reading. Um, and again, I try to tie it to everyday life. So again, this is ancient history class, but you can see here one of the assignments um, ties directly to um, news articles. And of course, the problem we find is that students don't read enough news articles, but when they start to realize how important this is in 2017, then history becomes more important. Um, and of course, I make them write essays on uh, such subjects, and I give them feedback. Um, and some of the commentary, um, it's uh, very interesting. They'll say things like, I'm very ashamed uh, that I didn't know about certain situations. In this uh, case, uh, this is the Muslim Rohingya. Again, it's directly tied to um, our lesson on India. And of course, they start to really realize um, current ties. They're thinking about Black Lives Matters, um, racial issues, and of course, their own personal family issues. And some of them end up sharing very, very, very intimate stories. So I only do this through the essay feedback uh, button in the assignments. Uh, one of them told me, for example, that their mothers uh, told them they were not light colored enough and um, that they needed to use papaya soap. So, you know, it's, it's very, very interesting things like this, uh, but it does make them read more and they will come back uh, with more articles to share with each other. Uh, and of course, the stories that they share are part of the class building. And that is very, very, very important when it comes to getting them to understand why they should even be in a history class, especially an online history class. Right, learning activities and strategies. So of course, most students are totally into gaming and into working together in groups. And so I have kind of harnessed that spirit of Pokemon Go and a lot of the um, Comcast activities. And they have a lot of games involved in their lessons. Uh, and if they go through the games and they're very good at um, answering questions, then I actually give virtual prizes. So for the best answers, for the best posts, for the best interactions, um, they will end up with e-cards from Amazon. I've gone to doing that because it actually just encourages them. Um, and as you can see here, um, I like to make different things into challenges. Um, and it's often tied to cultural sensitivity. So here they have to guess, of course, what is not allowed in Islamic custom. And this is the answer there. Of course, people are not supposed to show their feet. Right. Um, other than that, it's very hilarious because a lot of the students will involve their um, kids, 
their husbands. Um, I allow them to go to different restaurants to practice their newly found historical learning. Um, and they have dragged their husbands out to eat new foods. Um, and they are rewarded for doing that. Um, and we even have um, interaction with um, physical things. So I'll ask them to come to campus if they can um, to try some of the foods. I have cultural food days. Um, I invite them to global studies so that they can um, learn about studying abroad. And many times when they go through the lessons, it's like traveling. And so they'll say, you know, I'd really like to go to one of these countries. In terms of learning outcomes, of course, for history, we have to really get people to learn about important people, places, and ideas. So, of course, sometimes I do push the issue. Um, you know, I uh, have a section where students reflect on um, crazy emperors, and I often allow them to direct the class. So when um, they uh, talk about these things, they're allowed to ask me questions outside of class time, um, and they can self-reflect on their own lives. And I'm often spending a lot of time, not just within the forums, uh, but within the lessons and their activities, answering individual personal emails uh, where they've asked me about um, war questions. So of course, I have a lot of military people who take things online. Uh, and you know, I have to be kind, become kind of a specialist in war issues. Um, a lot of people will see family uh, matters, their own personal family matters, uh, where they're looking at things like uh, Roman lives and Roman emperors' relationships with their own families. Uh, and so in that way, of course, we really, really get to having them identify each emperor, each person, each um, historical figure. Um, also, one of the funniest things I have done for this particular um, learning outcome is I've asked them, which emperor do you think is the worst? And I use the poll tool and I've asked them to poll which emperor they think is the worst. And it's usually Nero. Uh, and so it's kind of interesting because they are comparing these guys to modern leaders. Um, and a lot of the issues that cause Rome to fall apart, the whole point is that I want to see uh, that they are understanding within current politics where the dangers are uh, by using ancient Roman politics and especially the fall of Rome. Uh, and of course, they actually do see a lot of the current 27 issue, 2017 issues um, in politics today. For the most important part of engaging the students and learning support, you can see here I virtually had to pretty much write my own textbook because a lot of the students really are new to uh, learning online. And so I've guided them with weekly lessons, um, which of course include photos and videos. And so they're not lost. Obviously, they can scroll down. And it's really kind of just like traveling. It's a story within itself. Uh, and of course, it invites them into the lesson and to each ancient culture we're learning about. But way more important than that is the fact that I've essentially created um, a 24-7 hotline. Now, what this is, it's a um, separate phone number uh, where they can call me on my cell phone from 6 to 9 o'clock every evening. And really, of course, what they really want to know is that there's somebody alive at the other end of this online course. And a lot of the older students who are new to um, learning online really need that help for the first two weeks. So I'll walk them through the weekly lessons, which are already guided. Um, of course, the worst part probably is the test anxiety. And so just being able to talk to me before the timed quizzes often really calms them down. Uh, and they can call me every single day and they know that. And then they can consult with me and ask questions. And then it also becomes, you know, like a teaching moment. So it calms them down. They're able to do the test with less fear. Um, I often give them three different ways of learning and talking to me. So, of course, they can contact me by two different emails. Um, and they can also, of course, come and visit me in class if they happen to be on campus. And so they have many different ways of talking to me. Um, and obviously that really helps them in terms of staying in the class for the whole semester. And I find this is the most essential tool.